Good morning. I want to welcome you here this morning. Uh, it has already been an exciting morning for some of the folks here uh, as they've been trying to get everything ready for you to have a wonderful time. Um, you know, sometimes you, you have great plans, you do all these things to get ready, and, and you get thrown little curveballs. I saw, I saw an image from the basketball tournament from the men's side of a player who was out there running around the court and his shorts were on backwards. Um, and, and didn't, you know, figured it out later. But like, you know, sometimes things just don't go right according to plan. Uh, this morning we've had a few of those things. One of them is that uh, we're all by our lonesomes today here in the sanctuary. The Wi-Fi, the signal going out from the church, it's not functioning. Um, I know. However, we're fortunate. We're able to go ahead and record all of this. And then once we're all done, we'll take it somewhere with internet and we'll get that all posted up where it normally is for folks. Been sending out messages in different ways to try to reach as many people as we can. If you have somebody in your life who wouldn't normally get an email or see our social media who does tune in, I'm, I'm okay with you pulling out your phone right now and sending them a message. That's, that's totally fine, uh, totally understandable. Um, so we will, we will survive. There was actually a time when these services were not live broadcast. I, I know. <laughs> I know some of you don't remember that, but I mean, there, there, that, there was a time, um, but uh, and we'll get that worked out, and at least it happened this Sunday and not next Sunday, so that, that's fantastic. Uh, uh, and then another thing, there's been preparations going on to go ahead and have some wonderful food right after church here, so the brunch has been in the works, um, and they've had their, their excitement today, as I understand it, as some equipment decided to not exactly work, so they've had to had to go ahead and adapt and overcome, uh, and they've managed to do that. So uh, I, you know, that means I'm under pressure because there's food. You're here, the food is there, I'm the only thing standing between you. <laughs> so I, I will feel that rising pressure as we move along today. Um, but I, you know, it's, I know it's important for us to be here, and, and uh, I know you're all actually here for one really important reason. Um, and that is to go ahead and to welcome Ned back to, a, to worship with us in person here this Sunday, right? Is that what it's, that's a... He's decided to sit somewhere new so that he can truly go ahead and offer feedback during the service if I'm kind of off course there. So he's got it, got it right there. That's fantastic. Um, it is also Palm Sunday. We're starting Holy Week. Uh, and this is a time where we think about a very special moment and Jesus making his way into Jerusalem, a very special parade. I am going to be needing lots of help to go ahead and make that happen in our worship today. So a little bit later on, after Rachel shares with us, uh, we're going to have a chance to get together in the front, talk about what it means, and then give people, people their palms and then join together. I'm going to need as many of our young folks as feel comfortable to come up and join me for that all the way through teenagers. Come on up and join me so we can have a wonderful time with that today. And as I mentioned, there's, a, there's brunch afterwards, there's going to be the final Lenten study group afterwards, um, so there are great things that are happening right after church. And do pay attention to also what's coming in the week ahead. Uh, Maundy Thursday, uh, there's going to be the card making class at 5.30, so that's still going to be happening. But then at 7 here in the sanctuary, we're, we'll have our, our service of shadows and light, the Tenebrae service, where we remember that first time that the communion was shared at the table and also remember what the events were that followed that as Jesus moved into the time of the Passion. On Good Friday, Friday of this week, from noon to three, I'll be over here, and if anybody wants to spend any time in the sanctuary in prayer or meditation, uh, reading, whatever it is that would be helpful for you on that day as we think about the cross and we think about what that day really means, you're welcome to be here for any part of that that would be helpful. And then moving to Easter morning, uh, we have our sunrise service at 6.15 a.m. Um, I, I, I'm wondering what it's going to look like. I, I did this because we had a discussion about it. Not, we didn't want it to be too bright by the time we got started. I'm now hoping we can see our bulletins. I don't know. We're, we're, in, the, we're in the middle there somewhere. But come find out. Uh, 6.15 on Easter morning, gathering with others, representatives from other faith communities, right back here behind the church. Uh, do join us for that. And 10 o'clock, we'll have our, our worship service for Easter here in the sanctuary. Some musicians will be joining us. It's going to be a wonderful time. Uh, and so wonderful events. I hope you have those all on your schedule. You're, you're looking forward to them. But there are other things that have been happening in the meantime. And so I want to invite uh, some folks who have some announcements to share and begin with Dale, who uh, wanted to go ahead and share an update on AHM. I'm sorry, I'm looking all, there you do. Okay. 
All right, so 123 pounds of food and other items so far collected for this drive for HIHS for the food pantry downtown. And also a, a money donation that was made in addition to that to go ahead and help out, and they can certainly purchase things. So thank you for your generosity in doing that, and Dale's going to get that all down there to them. And, uh, and, and we appreciate your support for something that's really, really needed right now. Also, I understand our youth group has something to share with us as well. So our youth group is very thankful for your support and your sweet tooth. Our cotton candy booth and over a dozen student volunteers raised a whopping $2,956. With Mrs. Cohen's donation of $44, we are donating $3,000 to the Gilead Church General Fund. Thank you. And this cotton candy booth was dentist approved, correct? I mean, you know, we got, that, we got that going for us. Folks, are there other announcements, other news we want to make sure to share as we get started today? Anybody else have anything we want to update with? Oh, sorry, yeah, Jeff. Oh, sorry, Barry, sorry. NC State won last night. I'm aware. <laughs> Yes, well, I am rooting for multiple teams in this, uh, and I had a daughter at the women's UConn game, so we're covering all of our bases here right now, and we're fine as long as they're not facing each other. We're good for a while here, so um, yeah, please do check those brackets. I'm doing pretty well, I think, so do look at them. Uh, Lynn, the men's one. The women's one, I'm, I'm, I'm atrocious. It's horrible. All right, any other announcements? If not, then let's take a moment to allow the music to help us to center ourselves and prepare for worship. No fair, Andre gets his own cheering section. Okay, I want to invite us to go ahead and, and get our programs, our bulletins, so that we can share a responsive call to worship. I invite you to rise either in spirit or in body, whatever is most comfortable for you. And let's offer this prayer together. We gather together in this place, raising our branches in joy, joining all who wish to see Jesus, eager for a healing touch, a blessing received. We gather together in this place, raising our branches in hope, joining all who wish to hear Jesus, longing for a message of welcome and acceptance on our journey. We gather together in this place, laying down our branches in fear, wondering if we are able to walk with Jesus through the week ahead, through anguish, accusations, despair, we gather together in this place, waving branches of prayer, walking toward the cross and the empty tomb, 
Amen. And now I'd like to invite you to grab those hymnals and turn to hymn number 192, All Glory, Laud, and Honor. Thank you so much. Please be seated if you would. But I'd like to ask that we continue in a spirit of prayer, so if you feel comfortable doing so, join in sharing this unison prayer for gathering aloud. Loving God, we recognize that the streets of our lives are often crowded with a parade mood filling the air, masking a callous indifference and lukewarm faith. Save us from thin hopes and small dreams. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, it is my privilege to invite Rachel to come forward and to share a little bit about her faith journey. And Good morning. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Rachel Cook, and I've grown up attending this church. I have been asked to come up here and speak about what Gilead Congregational Church means to me. And although I had a month to figure out what I wanted to say, I couldn't figure it out. There are simply too many options. I could talk about all my experiences with Sunday School and the youth group, how the church has introduced my family to Silver Lake, my experience on the search committee, or simply what it was like to grow up here. As I was figuring out to write, what to write, I realized that everything that I do and associate with this church comes back to one thing, generosity. This congregation is extremely generous in more ways than one. When I was in seventh grade, I collected donations for the Connecticut Humane Society for a school project. At the end of the project, I had to do a presentation on the outcome. One of my classmates raised their hand and asked, out of the 250 items that you were able to donate, how much came from our school? His jaw dropped when I told him that our team collected precisely four jars of peanut butter. The rest came from this congregation. Again, in eighth grade, when I was working towards earning my silver award for Girl Scouts, I reached out to this congregation to help again. Everyone was so generous, once again, and helped me donate about 40 pounds of food to HIHS. The generosity this church has doesn't just come from the physical items. This church gives out so much love. In the past couple years, as my schedule has become increasingly busy, I find that I can't attend worship as much as I wish. 
It's important to note that when I am unable to tend, attend, I don't get a letter sent home saying you better be careful, which is pretty much what Ram does. <laughs> instead, <laughs> instead, my mom tells me that so-and-so asked about you this week, and another week she says this person asked you how you are doing, and so on. People in this church are also generous with their time. Even with my lack of attendance, Annette Langevin did not hesitate to say yes when I asked her to be my mentor for confirmation. When I run into Tim Fellman and Heidi Byrne at school, they always check in to make sure I am doing okay. Even when I'm at work, people always stop to say hi when they see me, and it always brings a smile to my face. But it's so much more than just the three of them and running into people at the Flower Girl. It is everyone here. When I am able to come on Sunday mornings, I am welcomed with open arms from everyone. Even at Military WIS, I had no idea what I was doing, yet everyone helped me. <laughs> Gilead is such a special place because of the people. I know that when I walk into the sanctuary on Sunday mornings, I can trust everyone that's in here. I have met people and created relationships that I cherish and that I believe will last a lifetime. There is no doubt that this congregation is ready to help people. Growing up, I watched my dad and my siblings go on mission trips, and I couldn't wait until it was my turn. Last year, I finally had the opportunity to go on a mission trip with the youth group. The short trip made me fall in love with helping others, and at the end of each day, I felt like I had accomplished so much and that I made a difference in at least one person's life. But that would not have been possible without the youth group advisors generously giving up their time to bring us to Boston and the congregation purchasing shares and supporting us. Throughout my 17 years of attending this church, this congregation has taught me so much. Essentially, this church has taught me how to be a good person. My current Sunday school teachers have taught me that there is good even in bad situations and to appreciate all of the small things in life. Many things I have learned have come from watching. I may have been a quiet and shy kid, but there is no doubt that I learned so much from other people's actions, from the smiles when greeting others to praying for others during the service. You could say that Gilead generously teaches people, as I could sit here for months going over every lesson I have learned and share all the advice I have been given. But that still wouldn't be able to express just how much this church has done for me. As much as I am looking forward to experiencing new things outside of Hebron and Connecticut as I look ahead to college and beyond, I know Gilead Church will always feel like home, and I know I will always be welcomed here. Before I go to the next thing, I just have to say, um, the search committee is the group that was the face of Gilead during the time of transition. and were the people that I got to meet first and to get a sense of this church. Um, and you had a fabulous search committee, really wonderful people on it, amongst them Rachel. And I gotta say, uh, as we were moving through those times and moving towards the time to come and get voted on all these pieces, she reached out individually to go ahead and to offer encouragement and to help to go ahead and, and give me some, some prompting to not be nervous and to know the support that was there and to kind of guide me through it. The things you might think I should be the one turning around and offering to somebody else, she was ministering to me as we were going on through this. And so uh, just, just so you know, um, she's talking about the difference that everybody else has made in her life. She's made a huge difference in some other people's lives as well, and I'm one of them. So thank you very much for sharing, Rachel. Appreciate that. Really do. At this time, I mentioned I need some help, so I want to invite any of our young folks or young at heart that want to come join me up front so that we can get ready to celebrate Palm Sunday. All right, this is good. I'm, I'm excited. Thank you. Sit anywhere you want to be. You want to sit up front? Okay. Okay. It is Palm Sunday. Palms, right? These right here. That's what we mean with Palm Sunday? No. Oh. So it's, it's, not, it's not my hand, we're talking about palm trees, we're talking about, we're talking about leaves and branches and things. Maybe something like what we have back here behind me, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well today, in the Bible reading we're going to have in church, we're going to hear that Jesus, along with a lot of other people, were heading into Jerusalem 
so that they could celebrate Passover. And so it was a wonderful time, and folks were singing songs. Some of the songs they were singing were the ones that they would sing when they would get together to worship. And, and there were folks coming from all over. And in the midst of that, here comes Jesus. And he's riding along on this humble, humble little animal, and he's making his way in with a lot of other people. But folks begin to recognize him. They've heard about him. They've heard he's been helping people and teaching and healing people and doing amazing stuff. And they get super excited. They start telling the people next to them, that's Jesus right there. And it starts to spread. And so in the midst of what was already a celebration and a, a time thinking about God, in the midst of all of that, there is this a whole other celebration that breaks out. And there's an impromptu parade that ends up happening. We hear that uh, in another place, we hear that some folks take like the, the cloak on their shoulders and they throw it down on the ground to kind of make a, a red carpet for Jesus. And others go ahead and start grabbing the branches around them and they start waving them in the air, kind of like pom-poms. They start waving them in the air just to show their excitement and to shout and they start singing when they're doing that. It's amazing. Now we, we're gonna hear in the reading here some of what they sang. So it says, Hosanna. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Hosanna. That is a word we don't hear very often. Does anybody know what Hosanna means? It's okay if you don't. Hosanna means basically save us. It's a prayer. So when they're shouting out, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, they're saying, save us, God. But they're not saying it in a way like, oh, no, I'm in trouble right now. I need help right now. They're saying, God, I know that you can do anything and you can help us through anything. So keep being a part of my life. Save us. Be with us. We love you, God. They're saying a lot of stuff when they say Hosanna. But they're saying it with joy. And right now they're saying it when they see Jesus. And that's pretty cool. So what I would like to do is for us to have one small moment where we try to feel like what that parade might have been like. And to do that, we're going to do two things. One of them, the first thing is, I need your help. We're going to go ahead and hand out these palm leaves, okay, these palm branches, and I'm going to ask, once I've done that, don't take off when I hand you some. I'll wait here with them. Once I've done that, very calmly, we're going to head out and we're going to hand them out to everybody who's here in church. And to do that, some people should start in the back. Some people should head over to the choir. Make sure you get to Gail back there in that, in that recording studio back there, all over the place. And look around, see if anybody still needs them. And once we've handed out so that everybody has some, I want you to come back to the front because then we have to have a parade. All right? Are you up for this? Yes. Okay. Can I have some of my teens from youth group follow me up here? Can you each grab some and start handing them out to the others who are here as well? It's okay if they fall down. They were on the ground to start with. All right, so hand some out to them so they can start off. You can come back and get some more. You can take the stuff off the table as well. We want to use them all. So make sure everybody has some so that they can hand them out. All right, does everybody have some to start with? Okay, so very calmly, don't need to run, no pushing, no shoving. We will call foul. I need you to go ahead and go around and make sure everybody has some branches. And don't, don't worry about handing out all that you have. We've got some more, okay? So go ahead and hand out branches to everybody here. They're going to be very calm as well and not, not push or shove either, right? Look at that. <laughs> you may be saying, shouldn't this be happening with some kind of system? Shouldn't it start from here and go to there? And I would say to you, is that how it happened on Palm Sunday? Not how I hear it.
ahead and grab some more. Come on, bud. Want to go up there? All right, if you do not yet have any palm branches, can you raise up your hand so we can see where you are? Anybody? Got Deb? Gail, are you good? You got the, yep, you're good. All right, everybody have some? More coming around? All right. Now, here's what I need. First of all, do you all have still at least one? At least one. You can have more than one. Do you at least have one? Okay. All right, here's what's going to happen. We have to have our parade now. Now, here's the thing. You have the folks in the parade, and you also have the folks who are cheering for the parade. You all are going to be the folks in the parade. Everybody else, you're going to be the folks who are cheering at the parade. Not everybody can be on the basketball team. I just want to make that clear, okay? Some of you have to go and cheer for them, all right? Okay. So what's going to happen is I will lead you. We'll go ahead and we'll go around this way, and we're going to go to a big circle around. And as we're walking, we're going to wave our palms in the air, and everybody out here is going to wave your palm in the air, and we're all going to say over and over again, Hosanna in the highest heaven. So practice that with me. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Very good. Okay. Are you ready to do this? I'm going to turn off my microphone so I don't hurt anybody's ears. I think they'll be able to hear us still at home. So let me slip right through here. Okay, there we go. All right, we're ready. Crowd, are you ready? Okay, here we go. Are you ready? Here comes the parade. Follow me. Ready. <laughs> Hosanna in the highest heaven. sword fighting <laughs> or poking in the face or any of those things but you can have them and you can fold them up and maybe even someone can show you how to make a cross out of them sometimes that's some folks who know how to do that but if you want to you are welcome to head back to Sunday school right now through the walk through walk through Holy Week or you can move back to your families whichever you prefer okay If you are one of those folks who is able to make beautiful things out of other things, you have the crafting ability, which I do not, there are still some palms up here. And so if you are somebody who likes to go ahead and make crosses out of these, please feel free to grab some. If there's somebody not here who might like to have some, 
please go ahead and grab some. If we run out of those, let me know and we'll get some from somebody, okay? Um, but thank you for being a part of the parade and for having this celebration on Palm Sunday. What I want to do now is to continue on and when Rachel was talking, one of the things that she shared about was uh, the prayer life of this congregation um, and knowing that folks are praying for each other and that continues every day. In your bulletins, we continue to list some of the folks we want you to be mindful of and continue to just raise up each day and each week. But in addition, I've got some updates for you, so let me share those and then I'll ask if there's any others that we should be sure to offer. We were asked by the, the Hooker family to pray for their friend, um, Missy, and, and the many health concerns in Missy's family. And uh, Missy's brother, Nathan, uh, had just a very serious situation that was going on and he was able to come home from the hospital and see some signs of improvement. And so we want to continue to pray for Nathan um, and pray for those improvements to continue. Uh, we want to go ahead and offer prayers uh, for Les as he heals up after a procedure. And also uh, prayers for Pat Gallagher as she prepares for a heart procedure coming up on Tuesday. Uh, we have uh, a request uh, from the Eller family and, and that is to continue our prayers to think about Bill's father, um, kid's papa. Um, he's continuing his rehab journey after cardiac arrest in January um, and still is in the hospital, uh, but it's been slow steps going along, is now awake and making some gains, um, but still has a lot, lot of ways to go. And so if we could be thinking about Bill's dad, keep him in our prayers, continue to do that, that would be helpful. Uh, Ned, we're going to continue to pray for you uh, so that you can go ahead and, and get all, you know, where you need to be to be back in the choir, no pressure. Uh, but, you know. Uh, Tanya asked that we offer some prayers for her husband Cole and his cousins with his aunt Audrey uh, going into the final chapter of her life here on earth and um, also asked that we pray for a friend Judy's young grandson who had a very serious illness uh, but now is seeing some signs of improvement and, and it, was, it was quite serious but we're so grateful that it's improving right now. Uh, in addition to all those things right now even as we enter Holy Week Folks who are, of the, uh, who are Jewish are celebrating Purim, and folks who are Muslim, many of them are selling Ramadan. There are so many things going on around the world. We pray that each person might find a way to focus on God. And if we're focused on God, chances are we're going to be able to go ahead and to head in the right direction. But what I'd like to do now is ask, what other prayers do we want to make sure we lift up this morning? Are there others to make sure? Oh, wow. Fantastic. So your parents on Friday, you got together and celebrated their 71st wedding anniversary? Small milestone. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, there you go. All right. Fantastic. Thank you for sharing that joy. All right. Yeah, Jim. Yes, let's keep Ann Lewis and her family in our prayers. Of course, yeah. So continue to pray, pray for Ann Lewis and her family right now as they continue to be living in memories and thanksgiving. Yeah, Gail? We're thinking about your daughter right now with two sick little boys, but also with a dog tank who's been doing poorly all week, is now at the vet, trying to figure out where to go from here. A lot of things all happening and weighing upon them. So we'll, we'll offer prayers for them. Thanks, Gail. Yeah, sure. Okay. So Michaela heading into New York for a concert, so prayers for a safe time and a really fun time and safe return, of course. Yes, Stephanie? So prayers for your mom who fell over a bucket and needed 14 staples in her leg as a result of that. I'm gonna talk with your whole family about not falling down right now, okay? So. 
We're going to have a safety seminar here. We're going we're to do something here. Yeah, Brandon, you're, you're with me on this. Yeah, yeah, of course. So prayers for your brother Lloyd in treatment for cancer, and, and so prayers for the efficacy of that and for healing. And part of that healing is that he's able to be not alone, that you're able to get together on Xbox, you'll be able to talk to each other as you, you beat him completely at whatever you're playing. So uh, are we praying for you to win, by the way? Should... Oh, cooperatively. You're a team. You're just the better part of the team. Got it. Okay. All right. Good. Okay. All right. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, yeah. So we want to pray for the brands as they've had two, two dogs pass away this week, and that's, that's a lot. That's a lot to deal with all at once. So we're thinking about you guys. We know that that hits in a different way. Okay. Jeff, yeah. If you know I have to repeat these so that folks can, can understand them at home. I, I, so, well, I'll, should I have, ne well, yeah, go ahead, Ned. I'll, 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 we'll lump it together. Go ahead, yeah. Ned, we're grateful you're here, and we, we thank with you for all the folks who've been, you know, by your side through this, checking on you, just like you check on people constantly, you know, uh, it, you know it's great and wonderful that you're getting that support, um, and even the support of Jeff, mom calling with her <laughs> late husband's name on the caller ID, so that you wondered exactly what the nature of the phone call was, so... <laughs> You'll have to tell us later what you thought, how you thought that was going to go. Okay, <laughs> which, which direction? Okay, yeah. <coughs> oh. So your, Roxanne, your niece, Mona, is that what she said? Had a heart attack this week. Um, one artery they were able to address, another one they weren't open to open back up, able to open back up, but uh, some things that they've certainly seen there that, and, and some health and healing needed going forward. Um, but we're thankful for the intervention um, and pray for her, okay? Yeah. Yeah, Diane. So prayers for Diane's friend Barbara out in Ohio who's just entered hospice care. So prayers for her and for her family during this time of transition. Okay. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Have I missed anyone else? Yeah. Uh, prayers for <laughs> Prayers for your father and there. Your father, as he was supposed to start treatment again for bladder cancer this past week and couldn't because of complications, 
So prayers that that would get worked out so that he can get this help that he needs right now. Okay, thank you. Have I missed anybody else? Yeah. So continue prayers for your friend Sue, who's very near the end of her time as well. So prayers for peace during this time and uh, for comfort and a sense of assurance. Okay. If I missed anybody else? Anybody else? Okay. What I'd like to ask then is let's take a moment in silence to open our hearts, lift up whatever prayers right now are right there at the forefront of your mind and, and, and your thoughts, and let's, let's be a community offering our hearts to God. God, there are so many things that we have opened a small window into for the community today, but we know there are many more that we carry within our hearts, within our lives, folks that we are thinking of, the prayers that we live for ourselves. We ask, God, that you would respond because you hear each and every one, no matter where we are. We ask that you would offer us a sense above everything else of your presence, that we're not alone no matter what we face. And we ask that you would offer us guidance, help us to find the way forward that makes the most sense. And if there are ways to help us in this journey that make sense according to your wisdom, God, we ask that you would shower them upon us. There are so many things that we lift to you that we always need to be mindful, not only of our needs, but also of our joy and our gratitude. As we have welcomed Jesus in our worship today, help us to welcome you each day into the moments where we realize how blessed we are where we celebrate important and wonderful anniversaries and birthdays, where we understand, God, how our lives have been changed because of you from the very beginning. We pray all of this in your holy name. Amen. Our scripture for Palm Sunday is from the book of Mark, chapter 11, verses 1 through 11. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They told him what Jesus had said and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple, and when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, He went out to Bethany with the twelve. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. I would ask that you would grab your uh, hymnals once again and turn to number 193 where you'll find the words to a cheering, chanting, dizzy crowd. If you're comfortable, please rise either in body or in spirit. Yeah. 
Thank you so much. Please be seated if you would. We celebrated a parade. We heard about the events of that day, so many people streaming their way into Jerusalem. When I traveled to Israel, I had the experience of uh, the, being there during Holy Week. And the very first day that we were there, we went over and we took part with folks from around the world and walking down and then up from this valley to go head into Jerusalem by what seems would be the same route that Jesus was traveling this day. And there were people from everywhere and they were singing songs from different places and in different languages. And I have to say, it gave me kind of a real you know, tangible way of thinking for a moment what that might have felt like. And surely there were people there for all different reasons that had drawn them to this um, and had different understandings of what were happening that day. But there we were, and we slowly made our way to the press of the crowd and just took it all in, and it was amazing. The truth is, though, that what we understand is as, as wonderful as this moment of celebration seems, when we think about being welcomed into Jerusalem for this pivotal time, this time of Passover and the events that would follow in Jesus' passion, um, it may be that there are the thoughts of some grand parade, like when a ruler is being welcomed in, like people understand the magnitude of who he is and his authority and his importance. And so uh, the carpet being rolled out is a literal one and, and the pomp and circumstance due to somebody like that is absolutely present but it doesn't take very long to go ahead and to look to historical accounts to begin to understand how different this was from true moments where there were these official recognitions of those who were being honored, who were being lifted up as the leaders and the rulers and the victorious. There's one account that comes about a Roman general and the Greek author Plutarch describes it and I won't go to every detail, but what I'll tell you is it took three days for the parade to finally make its way to completion as this general made his way back from his victories in Macedonia. As all the items and things that they had brought from their conquest were paraded past folks, as the music was celebrated, as the soldiers went by, all of these things building up so that people would understand just how important Emilius Paulus, this general, was. Interesting that we don't really remember him but we remember Jesus. Still, here comes the King of Kings with literal worship songs being sung in his presence as he's making his way in, but he's riding on this lowly colt, we hear. And surely if he had talked to anybody about his plan, what he pictured happening when he told them to bring this animal to him, they would have been aghast at this being the kind of PR image that he was putting out there. What in the world was he up to? He's supposed to demonstrate strength and power and authority. And this doesn't really seem to match up. Sometimes when you get what you want, it's not what you expected. and It doesn't feel how you think it will. There's a minister, Joel Klein, who talked about an experience when he was in seminary, and he went with his wife, and they visited some of her relatives, her aunt and uncle in Pennsylvania, and uh, her uncle had saved up a lot of years, and now in retirement had bought a Lincoln Continental, and uh, this, was, this was the dream. And as they talked, the two of them later on looking at the car, his wife's uncle you know, said to Joel, he said, did you ever work really hard to get something and then when you got it, it wouldn't, it's not what you thought it would be. For a lot of folks in this crowd, that might have been the reaction as this kind of day evolved. As they wondered about this person that's getting cheered for and there he is riding in there on this lowly animal. There he is riding in with no great uh, victory of armies following him. There he is riding in, and it's not at all what they maybe had built up in their minds or expected. Is this the Messiah? Is it, is it a king, a new king for us? Is it a revolutionary who's going to throw out these foreign invaders and change everything? Is it just a rabbi who has wonderful things to teach us? Is, is that what's going on? For different folks in different places in life, they may have had a lot of different answers to that question. But one of the things 
I'd like to focus on real briefly this year is to think about as he made his way in there and as all of those thoughts swirled, just to think for a moment about the transportation that he chose that day. Now, we get some different accounts of exactly what he's writing. Uh, in the Gospel of Matthew, is my favorite one, we are told that he rides in on a donkey and on a colt. <laughs> Which I imagine you may have seen trick riding at a rodeo sometime. I mean, you may have, this is not impossible. And yet, I don't really picture it being what happened. Uh, Mark and Luke, they both mention the colt. John says a donkey's colt. <laughs> So we get some different descriptions there, and it is, just, it is just food for Bible study geeks to go ahead and to get into and to try to sort it all out and understand why they're doing this and what predictions they are hoping this exactly fulfills so they're worried if it's not exactly the right word that they use right there. They're thinking about the genus and the species, but that is just not the main thing. The main thing is that of all the things he could have done that day, he rides in on this young, unridden, humble animal. And what's really important is that there's nothing about that that makes him seem important or more important than somebody else. It's humility. There are a lot of poems and, and first-person accounts that have been written to think about what it was like for that, that colt or that donkey, depending on how you want to describe it. Um, it's kind of fascinating to see how many of them there are. Mary Oliver wrote one, and so, of course, that rises right up to the top of my list. She wrote and said, On the outskirts of Jerusalem, the donkey waited, not especially brave or filled with understanding. He stood and waited. How horses turned out into the meadow leap with delight. How doves, released from their cages, clatter away, splashed with sunlight. But the donkey, tied to a tree as usual, waited. Then he let himself be led away. Then he let the stranger mount. Never had he seen such crowds. And I wonder if he at all imagined what was to happen. Still, he was what he had always been, small, dark, obedient. I hope, finally, he felt brave. I hope, finally, he loved the man who rode so lightly upon him as he lifted one dusty hoof and stepped, as he had to, forward. It's interesting to think about that. There are lessons we can learn from all different parts of Scripture, all different places. There are examples that we can draw from to think about, and it's interesting to cast our gaze in a little bit of a different direction this time. Donkeys come up in many other places as well. And this week, coming up, March 28th, is the birthday of St. Teresa of Avila. She was born in Spain in 1515. She grew up in a privileged household, and as a, teacher, as a teenager, she decided to become a nun. So that's all well and good, but shortly after she made her decision, she contracted malaria, and she nearly died. She suffered paralysis of her legs for three years. And during this period, she had mystical visions, including ones of intense rapture. And these shaped her theological and spiritual life for the rest of her life. She eventually founded the Discalced Carmelite Order, and Discalced means shoeless. There was a new reform order in which the sisters lived in poverty, simplicity, and prayer. And in fact, uh, NPR's Terry Gross last weekend, uh, there was an interview that she did with a woman who had been a part of a Carmelite order of nuns now in the modern day. And it was interesting to hear about that life and the choice to be a part of it. Well, Teresa, she started this whole thing. She traveled across Spain back and forth, back and forth. And guess what she traveled on? Donkey. On that donkey, she went back and forth, and she established 16 new monasteries for women. Her books, including The Way of Perfection and The Interior Castle, are considered masterpieces in the Christian mystical tradition. The donkey may not have been the real main star in the story, the main point, but the minute we hear about how she went about her life as she affected so many other lives, the message that comes back from that is humility service, things we can learn from. My final donkey piece for today 
uh, comes from a few years after that, and it comes actually from the story of a woman who was a real favorite for one of my parishioners in Pennsylvania. Um, there was someone there who was quite fond of Corey Tenboom. Corey Tenboom was a, a Christian, and she became well known in her testimony about her faith and persevering during World War II. Um, she had the hidden place. She had that place where she took folks who were being persecuted, she took Jewish people who were being sought after, and she did her best to hide them from the authorities. And in the end, she was arrested because of that. In the end, she went through some travails, and in the end, she was put into a Nazi concentration camp. But she survived, unlike so many others. She did her best to do what she could to help. And because of that, as she talked about her faith being the thing that drove her to do it, Later on, folks often wanted to hear and learn from her about that. Well, on one occasion, she was being granted an honorary degree at a university, and one of the folks who was present there asked her a question. They said, uh, was it hard to remain humble when she got so much acclamation and you know, so much attention and rewards for what she had done in her life? And she replied immediately. She said, young man, when Jesus Christ rode into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday on the back of a donkey and everyone was waving palm branches and throwing garments in the road and singing praises, do you think that for one moment it ever entered the head of that donkey that any of that was for him? <laughs> but here's where it gets good, actually. She went on and she said, if I can be the donkey on which Jesus Christ rides in his glory, I give him all the praise and all the honor. If I could be the donkey. If I could be the servant. The disciple. Literally the word bearer. Something to think about in our lives. Now, if we step up, as Corey did, if we step up as St. Teresa of Avila did, if we step up and take that on to the best of our abilities, it does not mean that as a reward our life will just suddenly change and everything will be great. That everything will seem as easy as the first two Yukon games in the tournament so far this year. Remember, St. Teresa of Avila was paralyzed for three years. Remember the Corey Ten Boom, she was punished in the concentration camps for what she chose to do in the name of her faith. following, doing what we're called to do, serving, being the donkey even, it doesn't make everything better immediately. And in fact, when we think about this parade, all we have to do is think about a few short days from now what follows on Friday, because it feels like a pretty big defeat at times. On uh, Apple TV, for those who have it, uh, there's a new series that just went on there. I haven't seen it yet, but it's set during the time of President Lincoln, and it's called Manhunt. I bring this up because of something we may not know about that period of history right at the end of the Civil War. You may not know that the Civil War officially ended on Palm Sunday. April 9th, 1865, General Lee, Ulysses S. Grant, in the village of Appomattox Courthouse in Virginia, the surrender, the end of the bloodiest war ever fought on American soil, state against state, brother against brother. It tore the nation apart on that day, on Palm Sunday, it came to an official conclusion. But you also may not place at a certain time the other thing, and that it was only five days later on Good Friday, the day we think of Jesus' crucifixion, that arguably most revered president of the United States, Abraham Lincoln, was shot and mortally wounded by John Wilkes Booth in Ford's Theater, and the first president that we lost in that way. Answering God's call or dropping everything to join in following Jesus, it doesn't mean it will be smooth from there. Holy Week teaches us anything but that. What follows the parade is Good Friday, and we understand that. Sometimes it's a lesson we learn from everywhere around us, and yet it speaks powerfully to us. The final place I will just pull a little bit of wisdom to share with us here today is just to point out something we've just experienced. Yesterday was lovely, yes? <laughs> Did anybody have dogs to walk yesterday? <laughs> and I'm sorry, I know. But any reason that you had to go out, 
any reason you had to be in it. It was miserable. But you know what? It wasn't what it was even north of here in Vermont and New Hampshire. Under serious snow and cold, when they thought everything had changed, ha ha. And of course, what will follow, as it always does, is when the warm comes, the mud will follow. And I've seen some amazing pictures of uh, what that looks like as you go a little bit north of here. Well, Parker Palmer wrote something beautiful about that. Maybe it's a lesson for us this week and today. Parker wrote and said, there is a hard truth to be told. Before spring becomes beautiful, it is plug ugly. Nothing but mud and muck. I have walked in the early spring through fields that will suck your boots off. A world so wet and woeful it makes you yearn for the return of ice. But in the muddy mess, the conditions for rebirth are being created. So as we move into Holy Week, let's keep our eyes and our hearts open and let's begin looking for those first signs of rebirth and let us recognize the difficult path it took for Jesus to go down to show us the ultimate gift of rebirth that God has waiting for each and every one of us. Amen. (laughs) Folks, we are called in our living to find ways to share of ourselves, and that can take a lot of different forms. Today, as we have offered our praise to God and to praise to Jesus, that is absolutely one of them. This week, as we take time to focus on what Jesus went through, that is also one of them. But during this service, if you feel called to do so, we certainly welcome other gifts that you might want to share towards the continuation of our ministry, financial gifts, or taking this time to dedicate yourself to how you will be of service, how you will be the donkey. So let's do that now, opening our hearts to God.
Dear God, we ask that you'd bless these gifts and all of the ways that we are seeking to be generous in our living. Help us to find each time we do that, that we are modeling what has been shown to us in the life and the love and the ministry of Jesus Christ. Help us each day to grow bolder in doing it, to share and to understand by doing so that we multiply your gift of good news in so many ways in this world. We pray that we may continue to do it every day and to offer our service in the name of Jesus who calls us together here. Amen. <coughs> Folks, I'd ask now that you would turn in your hymnals to our closing hymn, number 191, Ride On, Ride On in Majesty. Folks, same rules as always. You can certainly go around me outside to make it quicker to the brunch. The youth group is in there ready to help you out. I don't want to stand between you and those things and be run over. So I hope you will join us, though, and you'll enjoy some wonderful time of fellowship afterwards and a time of learning with the class uh, and a time this week that will be meaning for you, meaningful to you as you journey towards Easter. But now, as we depart from this time of worship, may we find God's blessing upon each and every person here, every person joined to us in worship, May we find that we are surprised each and every day by the presence of God in our life, by the miracles that surround us and sometimes are unnoticed, and by the good gifts that God shares with us through hardships, through times of learning and growth that transform us and this world and help us to be better. We pray for this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Ha, 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 ha.